city are moving very, very far, very, very fast. It'd be naive to think, oh, they're just going to go away. I don't think that's going to happen anytime soon. City are everyone's rivals now. Everyone wants to beat us. Manchester City's ambition and aggression and what they do is a reflection of what they need to do to catch up. Manchester United just have a name, they have a history that Manchester City, they probably will never get close to. I'm in no doubt that City wants to be the biggest club in the world. Clearly that takes time, it's, it's not something that comes over a year or two, it, it comes over decades. We've almost got the best team. We're not a million miles off the best team in the world. City's owners are playing, you know, the long game in this. They realise that in 20 years' time, you know, if they can get success on the pitch and everything is right off the pitch, that is when they might be able to catch up with Manchester United. What we're now seeing really is, is City putting in the groundwork, laying the foundations of something that will become much bigger and much greater, uh, certainly into the next decade and beyond. I think the next stage now is the academy. People say, oh, why, why have there been no players come through yet? But if you look at last year's under-18 side with Diaz and Foden, they're the players now who are good enough. It's, it's only a matter of time with that. It's not just about Manchester City anymore. You know, Manchester City is Melbourne City, it's New York City. They've got a club in Yokohama. There's ambition to have a club in every single continent of the world. I think City uh, mean business, and as we've seen on the field and off it, they're starting to, to play the business too. Manchester United, I guess, is, uh, is football aristocracy, it's football heritage. It has built its brand upon decades of success. Consistently, a team whose stories are read by more people, whose matches are watched by more people. There is an interest in Manchester United, both domestically and globally, that Manchester City, at the moment, simply cannot get in. I think there's a long way to go until they're at the same point of being the brand as well as the team that United is. Worldwide, everywhere you go, everyone knows United. I don't think you can say the same for City yet. I think that with Sir Alex Ferguson going and David Gill going at the same time, there's been a, a bit of a, a period at Manchester United where the club has lost a little bit of momentum and, dare I say, identity. He knew what was coming. Ferguson, even when, as he retired, he knew that the City project, as people describe it, was coming on leaps and bounds and he knew that he'd win the league eventually. He knew at that point that Manchester City were a coming force and they were going to rival Manchester United for the major honours. I've been really impressed by the way in which uh, City has embraced and worked with new technology. Um, not just its citizens platform but also its use of YouTube. Yo! What's up? Hi, Manchester City Channel. The third club in the world to a million subscribers on YouTube. The first in the Premier League by a long shot. Solely, the purpose is to, to engage and connect with fans and mainly the younger fans. They're looking to try and bring supporters in from other parts of the world who might not necessarily actually go to games, but will invest in the club and this, this generates an interest which they think that in the long term will help Manchester City become a more popular club. City simply doesn't have the established global fan base that Manchester United does. And so therefore what it's trying to do is, is really to, to, to rapidly um, fast track itself into the upper echelons of, of world football by using social and digital. City don't play catch up when it comes to media and digital. Everyone else does because of what City are doing. Manchester City is, is, is playing to a narrative, a 21st century narrative, which doesn't just emphasise digital, social, it also reflects the importance of, of female sport and the growth of women's football. If you ever ever look at how the club review the season, it's not just the men's team, they'll review the, the club as Manchester City, Manchester City Women's and Manchester City Academy. That is one thing I will say that we're falling behind on, why is it not a women's Manchester United football team, you know what I mean? We should be investing in things like that, I, I do agree with that. The only way that Manchester City really can properly compete with Manchester United is if they get it right on the pitch. In football, winning is everything, certainly at the top level of the game, certainly in growing a global brand that delivers significant commercial returns. I think a growing number of Manchester United fans now recognise that Manchester City is their true derby match. There's definitely two teams in Manchester now. The noisy neighbours are becoming really, really nice. There is no doubt, whilst Manchester United can sustain itself for a while longer yet, the clock is certainly uh, ticking and United really does need to start winning on the field again. It gets to 10 years 
without a title, then people will start to look. This is us making history now. This is what we'll look back on in 30, 40 years time as a huge five to ten years for the club. They'd have to win a lot of trophies, they'd have to win the to win the European Cup, they'd have to win a lot more Premier League titles to be anywhere near Manchester United level.